everybody. I promised that I would stop by and uh, do some practice with you on taking partial derivatives um, of a function. We had a chance to look at this uh, previously, but I thought we maybe could do uh, some extra examples just to kind of get the hang of it, uh, get into the, the mode of calculating derivatives again, um, and just kind of um, have some fun trying to kind of get on top of of learning how to take partial derivatives. So just remember that uh, if you have a function of two variables, x and y, then you have two different partial derivatives that you can calculate, right? We can calculate f sub x, that's the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and we can also cal uh, calculate f sub y, which is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. When you're calculating a partial derivative, Right? You're going to be treating the other variables as constant. So if I'm calculating the partial derivative of f with respect to x, I'm going to treat the y as a constant. And similarly, if I calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to y, well, I'm going to be treating x as a constant while I do that. Okay? So let's just practice this. I, I've shown you some examples before, but I think some more examples would be a good idea. Let's find all of the first and second order partial derivatives for a, a few functions here, okay? Uh, by the way, for the second uh, order partial derivatives, of course, you can take fx and then fx again, or you can take the partial with respect to x first and then y, or you can take the partial derivative of y first and then x, or you can take two derivatives, partial derivatives with respect to y, right? So there's going to be two of these first order partials and four second order partials, okay? Uh, although these two in the middle are always going to turn out to be equal to each other, um, so really you only have to calculate three of these here. Um, in most circumstances, I should say, these mixed partial derivatives here in the center will be the same. There are a few subtle requirements on the function that have to be satisfied in order for that to be true. Uh, but those requirements are almost always true. So for the cases that we're going to look at, um, this is something that you can, that you can uh, kind of keep, keep in mind. Okay? So let's do this one. Let's take f of xy equal to y times the ln of x. And I'm going to be calculating these partial derivatives. Feel free to pause the video and try to work these out yourself first, and then you can always um, continue the video and make sure that, that you've got the right answers. Okay, if you've kind of got the hang of this already, uh, there's no need to kind of um, you know wait for me to to present the results. You can try these on your own and then uh, go from there. Uh, so once we've got the hang of it, it moves pretty quickly, actually, right? So if I have this function, y times the ln of x, and I want to calculate f sub x, which is the partial derivative of f with respect to x, I'm going to treat the y as if it was a constant number, and I'm just simply going to take the ln of x and differentiate it, and that's going to give me 1 over x. So I will end up with y over x as my first uh, partial derivative with respect to x. On the other hand, if I want to differentiate this function with respect to y, in that case I'm treating the x as a constant, so that means that the whole ln of x will just be a constant being multiplied by y. Okay, so you know, if I was going to take the derivative of, I don't know, 4y, I would get 4. So if I'm going to take the derivative of ln of x times y, I'm just going to get the ln of x, right? Okay, so those are the first order partials. Now let's do the second order partials. Let's calculate f sub x sub x, right? So let's differentiate this first one here, this first partial with respect to x. Let's differentiate it with respect to x again. So again, I'm going to treat the y as a constant. This x is being raised to the negative 1 power. So of course, the power rule tells me that the derivative of that would be negative of x to the negative 2. And my y is just a constant, so I simply bring it along for the ride when I do that calculation. Okay? On the other hand, if I want to do f sub xy, now I'm going to take this expression y over x, and I'm going to treat the x as a constant. 
So really, 1 over x is just a constant being multiplied by y. Well, the derivative of that with respect to y would just be the constant in front, which would be 1 over x. Okay. The next one would be fyx. So here's what f sub y is. If I differentiate this with respect to x, of course, I get 1 over x. This confirms uh, what I had said earlier, that the mixed partial derivatives should be equal. We see here that they are. Finally, f sub yy, if I take ln of x and treat the x as a constant while I differentiate relative to y, well, that's just going to be 0. This is just like differentiating a constant in that case. Okay, so the first order partial derivatives are here, right? And from those, I can calculate the second order partial derivatives um, on this line below. And, of course, you don't have to stop at two derivatives. You could take any number of derivatives of these functions. But I think um, to get the hang of what we're doing here, there's no need to, to really go much beyond um, the first couple of partial derivatives. Okay, let's, uh, let's try another example. Okay, just keep practicing a little bit more on this. Um, so the second example for the, for the video here, let's take f of x and y to be equal to x squared y cubed plus the sine of x times e to the 2y. Okay, so let's see, uh, let's see what we can do with this one, okay? Uh, this one's going to take a little bit more. It's a bigger function. It's going to take a little bit more writing to get all of the partial derivatives down. If we calculate f sub x, I've got two terms, so I'm going to work on them one by one. I treat this y cubed as a constant, and I just differentiate x squared. That's just going to give me the 2x times my constant. Okay? <clears throat> and now here I have the sine of an expression. Okay, the derivative of sine is always cosine of the same expression, but we have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. And we're doing that derivative with respect to x right now. So this part inside the parentheses is really an exponential involving only y. That would be a constant when I'm doing the partial with respect to x. e to the 2y is a constant and it's being multiplied by x, so the derivative with respect to x is just the constant, which would be the e to the 2y. Okay, so there's the first partial with respect to x. Uh, let's calculate the first partial of f with respect to y. Okay, so going back to the original function here. Okay, so this is our function we're starting from. When I differentiate with respect to y, well, this time the x squared is treated as a constant. And when I differentiate 3y, uh, sorry, when I differentiate y cubed, I'm just going to get 3y squared. So we get 3 times x squared times y squared. <clears throat> For the second term, I have, the, again, the sine of some expression. So let's um, put down the cosine of that same expression. And now when I'm differentiating with respect to y, I'm going to treat the x like a constant. And I'm going to differentiate the e to the 2y, which just gives me 2 e to the 2y. So I'll put my x in there and write down 2 e to the 2y. Okay? So there you have the, um, the first order partial derivatives. Okay? So maybe I won't do all of the second order partial derivatives here because it's going to be a little bit messy. Let me just look at the first... Uh, partial, sorry, the, the second partial derivative with respect to x twice, and we'll see if we can get this one uh, figured out, and then maybe we'll call that good enough. Now, the derivative of 2xy cubed with respect to x is just 2y cubed, and here's a constant, right, the e to the 2y here at the end of this is just a constant when I'm differentiating this second piece. I have a cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative of the sine of whatever is the inside function. And then I have to differentiate the inside function with respect to x, which means e to the 2y is, is my constant multiplied by x. Okay? I'm normally not that interested in a lot of simplification. Um, if there's easy or obvious things that you can do to simplify an expression, it would be good to do them. For instance, here, I would change my plus to a minus, and I've got two factors of e to the 2y 
So it would be great to combine those together as e to the 4y, and then we have the sine of x e to the 2y. Simplifying it is especially useful if you're going to end up taking higher derivatives than what you already have here. We're going to stop at fxx. We're not going to differentiate it again. So it's not quite so critical that we, that we simplify it any further. But this is what you would, what you would get if, if you were going to do that. Okay, um, maybe I will uh, just uh, calculate what f sub x y is uh, because it might give us a chance to practice one other thing that we haven't seen so far. Um, with respect to y, so I take the f sub x and I'm going to differentiate this one right here. I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y. So the 2x is a constant and when I differentiate y cubed I get 3y squared. So if I multiply all of that together, the 2 and the 3 is going to make a 6. So 6x times y squared. For the derivative of the second part, I have to recognize that this is actually a product where both parts of this product have a y in them. So this is not a constant and this is not a constant. With respect to y, they are both um, non-constant. And so I actually have to use the product rule for that. Okay? So the product rule says take the first term, cosine of x times e to the 2y, okay, times the derivative of the second term with respect to y, which is 2e to the 2y, okay, and then plus, now we take the second term, e to the 2y, and multiply it by the derivative of the first term, which is negative sine of x e to the 2y times the derivative of x e to the 2y with respect to y, and um, the derivative of this thing I just circled with respect to y is just going to be 2x e to the 2y. Okay, so there is your product rule. The part in brackets here, the big square brackets, that's the first term times the derivative of the second, plus the second term times the derivative of the first. And this is quite messy, um, so simplifying it is probably not something that, that I would uh, want you to worry about. Okay? I won't bother with the other second order partials. I think you're kind of getting the idea here. Um, I want to give you maybe just a little bit more practice. You know, the function that you're looking at might not just involve x and y, right? It could have more than two variables in it. So I wrote one up here, uh, so this would be number three. Suppose that my function actually depends on x, y, and z, right? This is certainly possible. Let's suppose we have the ln of x, y, z squared times the sine of x, okay? And again, let's just figure out this, uh, this first, first uh, order partial derivatives here. Now this time there's going to be three of them, right? There's f sub x, f sub y, and f sub z. We have to kind of calculate all of these. So let's see. The thing with the, the x partial derivative is actually the most complicated one because the x occurs in both of these two terms. Again, I have a product here, a multiplication, right? So I'm going to use the product rule for this. I'm going to take the first term, which is ln of x, y, z squared, times the derivative of the second term with respect to x, where well, the derivative of sine is just cosine, plus the second term, which is sine of x, times the derivative of the first term with respect to x. Now this is the log of an expression. The log of any expression, when we differentiate it, we write down 1 over that expression. And then I have to multiply. This is the chain rule. Don't forget the chain rule requires you to multiply by the inside function. Or, the, I'm sorry, by the derivative of the inside function. Well, the derivative of x, y, z squared with respect to x is just y, z squared. Because you treat the y, z squared as a constant being multiplied by x. Right, so if it was the derivative of 6x, the answer would be 6. So if it's the derivative of yz squared x, the answer is yz squared. This could be easily simplified right there. Um, 
But other than that, uh, you could pretty much just leave this expression the way, the way we have it here. Okay? The other two first order partials are going to be easier uh, because there is no y or z on the second term. So when I differentiate this with respect to y, I can just treat the sine of x as a constant because there's no y in it at all. And now I can just differentiate the logarithm again. So again, the derivative of log of anything is 1 over that thing. So 1 over xyz squared. But then I have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of xyz squared with respect to y. So this time the xz squared is my uh, constant multiplier of the y. So we just put that down and now you can see that xz squared completely cancels. So this one actually is not that big of an expression at all. It's just the sine of x divided by y. <laughs> okay. Uh, finally, uh, f with respect to z is going to be similarly uh, pretty straightforward. The sine of x again is just a constant at this point when we're differentiating with respect to z, we're going to be treating both x and y as constants. So here I'm treating sine of x as a constant. I have my logarithm, which just gives me 1 over xyz squared. And then the derivative of xyz squared with respect to z, well for that, the x and the y are constants, and when I differentiate z squared, I just get 2z. So we get 2xyz. This can be slightly simplified. Okay, so we can write this as 2 times the sine of x, right, and then divided by z, I believe. Okay, so those would be the, the first order partials for this function of three variables. Um, the second order partials, well, <laughs> you know, that's going to be, um, well, there's going to be several of them to do, right? For the second order partials, you can do fxx, fxy, fxz, um, fyz. And then you can do, you know, fyy, fzz. All of the mixed partials are equal, so the fyx will be the same as the fxy, and the fxz will be the same as fzx, and so on. So you have sort of three partial derivatives here of second order that are not mixed. You have to calculate all of those. But then the mixed partials, uh, instead of doing six calculations, right, you can just do three of them because the other three are going to be equal uh, as these equations are, are sort of showing you here. Okay, so there's a, there's a good example there. Um, Okay, let me just uh, point out, um, for the last but not least, the, the, there is another notation for the partial derivatives. I just thought I would remind you. I kind of had a chance to talk about this briefly, but you know, the, the f's of x, right, can also be written as partial of f with respect to x using this uh, d notation, right? So you might be wondering, well, what do we do for the second order partial derivatives if, we, if we're using that d notation? So what, what we do basically for the unmixed partials, second partials, is we just put a 2 up here above the f, and then we put a 2 down here after the x. It's a little strange. The 2 goes kind of in the middle of the top part of the notation, but it goes at the top right of the, of the lower portion of the notation. So th this is not a misprint. This is actually the way it's done. This is not to both supposed to be viewed as x squared. That's not what it is, right? It's just actually what this is, is it's the partial with respect to x of the partial of f with respect to x again, right? So you're just doing this uh, operation of differentiating with respect to x twice in succession, right? So that's, a, that's a, a way of writing that. Of course, f, y, y would be very similar. The only difference being that the x has to now be written as a y. So we can easily put that one down. And then finally, uh, with respect to the mixed partial, let me write this f, x, y here. When I write it like this, 
Uh, I'm kind of imagining that I'm calculating the partial with respect to x first and taking that result and differentiating it with respect to y. So when I use the alternative notation for that, right, the y derivative is actually the last one that we are going to calculate. So you will normally write your order of partial differentiation like this. And the thing is, so then that is usually written, you know, with um, the second partial of f with respect to, well, the y is actually on the left here, and then the x, but remember, for this one, we're actually kind of reading from right to left, right? So this means differentiate the x first, and then the y. Remember, guys, it doesn't really matter, right? And <laughs> remember, we've said before that these two mixed partials are actually the same anyway, so you don't have to, you know, stress out about this, but just so you understand, when the notation is written this way, we are imagining doing the x differentiation first and then the y differentiation. Okay? Um, and this would be the notation for that. Okay, so uh, anyway, that's just some no uh, alternative notation for these for these higher order uh, derivatives. We've already pretty much been practicing these, I think. So um, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, try some problems on your own, uh, you know, from, from the book and, and uh, homework and that kind of stuff. And then we can always practice together a little bit more uh, when we, when we uh, get back together and when we have another opportunity. I'll be happy to um, help you uh, continue to work on these partial derivatives. You do need to know the partial, oh, sorry, the, the derivative rules from Math 151, from first semester calculus because the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule. Remember the quotient rule? If you have, you know, the derivative of f over y, we didn't do this today in a practice problem, but everybody needs to know that the way the formula works is you put the denominator squared on the bottom, and then we do the g times the f prime minus the f times the g prime. So there's a minus here. Whereas with the product rule, we would be putting a plus here between these two terms, and we wouldn't have the denominator. But with the quotient rule, you do. This is just low d high minus high d low, all over low squared. Okay, so the quotient rule, the product rule, the power rule, the chain rule, those derivative rules that you learned in first semester calculus, we're going to be needing them here to do partial differentiation in the same way, okay? But remember, partial derivatives are really just the same thing as what we were doing in first semester calculus as long as we just treat all of the variables as constants except the one that you're differentiating with respect to, okay? So give that some practice, see how it goes, and uh, we'll talk some more about it uh, again soon. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you soon.